here is a good example to help you understand the effective nuclear charge or Z effective. So here we have a sodium atom. A sodium atom has 11 positive charge in nucleus because there's 11 protons there. There's 11 electrons in orbits around the nucleus, or I should say orbitals. I keep saying orbits, but they're really orbitals, of course. We have two in the innermost energy level. We have eight in the next energy level and one lone electron in the third energy level. So normally we can calculate the ionization energy as being 1312 kilojoules per mole times z squared over n squared. Of course, z squared over n squared is only good if there's only one electron left in the, in the atom. Of course, when there's only one electron left, it's typically no longer an atom, it's an ion. And of course, sodium with only one electron left, that's a very unusual case, and we're not going to see that typically in nature or even in the laboratory. So instead of using Z, the actual nuclear charge, we should be using the effective nuclear charge. The nuclear charge this electron appears to see because of the shielding effect of those other 10 electrons that are in inner orbits relative to this last electron. So this electron doesn't see as if there's an 11 positive charged nucleus there. It sees a nuclear charge that is the Z effective, and we're trying to find out what that Z effective is. What is it? So we write the equation as follows, I, the ionization energy, is equal to 1312 kilojoules per mole times the effective nuclear charge squared divided by n squared. n, of course, represents the principal quantum number or the energy level where the electron resides. So in this case, n would be equal to 3 because it's in the third energy level. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take that equation, turn it around, and solve it for z effective. So we're going to take the 1312, put it down here, take the n squared, put it down here, turn the equation around. So this becomes z effective squared is equal to the ionization energy times n squared divided by 1312 kilojoules per mole. And so then to find z effective, we simply take the square root. So z effective is equal to uh, I can bring the n in the front because I can take the square root of that. So it's n times the square root of the ionization energy measured in this case. In this case, the ionization energy measured is 496 kilojoules per mole. And we divide that by the standard 1312 kilojoules per mole, which is the ionization energy for the lone electron in a hydrogen atom. So in this particular case, let's figure out what Z effective is. So Z effective for sodium, taking the, la the final electron or the outermost electron away from sodium. What is the Z effective for this particular electron? Well, N is going to be 3, because it's in the third energy level, times the square root of the ionization energy for that would be 496, and divide that by 1312. Notice I eliminated kilojoules per mole because that cancels out. So all we have to do now is take a calculator and work that out. So 496 divided by 1312. Take the square root of that, multiply times 3, and we get 1.845, ah, about 1.84. So Z effective is equal to 1.84 positive charges. Wow, that's quite a, a difference. There's actually 11 positive charges there, but to this electron, due to the presence of these other 10 electrons, it appears as if the charge at the center is only 1.84 positive charges rather than 11. So that's a dramatic difference. And that is why a sodium atom is so big, because the orbit of this 11 electron is so far away from the center because it feels so little attraction from the center charge of the nucleus. And there, hopefully, that gives you a good idea of what we mean by Z effective.